You're listening to That Gets My Goat. Never again. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. Oh, and this is Rochelle Field. Yeah, and we're here with another That Gets My Goat. Hopefully you're enjoying That Gets My Goat. we got several of them lined up. We've got a, a release schedule. We have so many lined up. And we're shoving this one right in the middle of that release schedule. And it hurts, guys. <laughs> it does. Rich has been complaining about it all the time. But I don't care, because it's my idea and we're doing it. And you're going to like it. Well, speaking of liking it, uh, you and I, this week, both finished Daredevil Season 2 on Netflix. Yeah, I thought it would be cool to talk about it, because uh, we talked about TV shows at the end of the fall season. You know, we, we'd finished watching Jessica Jones, Flash, and Agents of, Shield. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and we talked about some other shows, too, which we hadn't even seen yet, but we'd like to. Although Rish refuses to watch anything that was on Sci-Fi because they changed their name to Sci-Fi. Tiffy, they didn't change their name to Sci-Fi. <laughs> they changed their name to a stupidly spelled. It's like the way people try and like name their children now, where they're like, "I know, I'll purposefully misspell this name." Why? Why would you do that? What? It's like, because my child is a very special snowflake, and it can't be spelled Michael without a K. Yeah, yeah, you can. That's how Michael is spelled. My child would be spelled M-I-K-E apostrophe L-L. Oh, no. (laughs) Don't do that, guys. Life is hard enough for a kid without being like, well, I think this is how Michael is spelled. Bullshit, that's how Michael is spelled. And that's the teacher talking. (laughs) Yeah, there were shows that we had... Oh, The Expanse, that's what you're talking about. Oh, yes, I wouldn't watch The Expanse. How could I watch The Expanse? I don't know. I can't watch it either, but I'm still trying to figure out a way. And if I do, I will force you to sit down with me. So there. I don't believe you. We would have to actually get together socially for you to force me to do Although you are forcing me to podcast. There you go. See? Look at that. I'm all about forcing you to do things. That's my bag. Baby. Yeah, baby. That's my bag. One book. <laughs> yeah, so Daredevil, uh, I mean, it's been out for a while. But if you're not like the rest of the world that binges and watches the entire 13 episodes in the first weekend that it comes out, then you're maybe like me and Rish, who spreads it out over time and finishes it over months, like you watch a regular TV show. The way television was meant to be seen. (laughs) That sounds like a tagline for some kind of a TV network. (laughs) Although, when it comes down to it, I actually did binge this show. I just binged it this week instead of months ago when it first came out. I watched one episode and then waited like a month and watched the second episode and waited another month and then watched 11 episodes. Holy crap! Within the space of a couple of weeks. But I really enjoyed it. It was a good show. It was fun because they brought in all sorts of extra stuff this time around. Last time it was basically Daredevil versus Kingpin. And that was it. There, there was not other things. This time around, they brought in the Punisher as what seemed like the bad guy for the season. But then halfway through, oh, there's Elektra too. She was sitting on his couch waiting for him when he got home, right as he finished capturing the Punisher. And it was weird. It seemed almost like, you know, one of those episodic TV shows like Flash or something like that, where like, okay, we got that bad guy. Now here's a new one kind of a thing. And you just see like a glimpse of him at the very end, like Grodd just does a little, comes on screen and snorts or something, and then it cuts to black. And one thing that I thought was super awesome that they did, and I loved this because they did this several times during the course of the series, they brought the the kingpin back. It seemed like he was not going to be part of this. And then all of a sudden, there is Vincent D'Onofrio, and he says, Oh, I wanted to talk. I don't remember what he said. I'm here to talk to you, or something like that. We need to talk. Yeah, and then it cuts to black, and it says, special guest star, Vincent (laughs) D'Onofrio. I I don't know why, but I loved that. The fact that they held his credit for the end of the show instead of putting it on the start. 
I was talking to a friend at work about that, and he's like, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you how many times something's been spoiled because somebody's name comes up on the credits, and you're like, oh, okay, I guess that person isn't dead after all. That shit happened on <laughs> Angel all the time. Where you'd be like, whoa, what? how is that person in here? And yeah, it's the last 30 seconds of the show. It's like, oh, well, you shouldn't have said their name in the opening credits then. I've been waiting for them to show up. Oh, geez. Sorry, that's a little aside. But it yeah, was it's well gotta, handled. It's got to be some kind of legal thing where, you know, it's like, well, dude, their contract says that we mentioned them in the opening title. But yeah, it would have dampened that surprise in yeah like who is pulling the strings who is getting castle yeah, maneuvering well, castle and then yeah what is going on there yeah something weird is going on and uh, it was very cool the way they handled I, I don't know what it is I mean that was the thing that made me smile even more than anything even more than seeing him was seeing the credit come up for him <laughs> afterwards I'm just like oh nice thanks for saving that to the end guys you guys are awesome and they did that again with Carrie Ann Moss when she made her little appearance. You didn't know that she was going to be there. And then when it cut to black, and she wasn't like last seen or anything. But yeah, when when uh, it cut to black, it was like a oh, special guest appearance. And that was cool. I, I loved that. I loved how we saw all of these characters from season one that came back. Like Nobu comes back and the old... Chinese lady yeah, comes back. Yeah, Madam and Gao. Stick comes back. Stick. And, uh, you know, Night Nurse, of course, comes back. Uh, right. I, I know she has a name. It's Claire something. Right? Yeah, it is Claire something, but I'm not sure what the last name is. That Rosario Dawson plays. And Melvin Potter came back, who is uh, the gladiator. He's a daredevil villain. He's the guy that makes their costumes. and and He's uh, a villain? Yeah. Huh. But he makes their costumes in this one. No, he missed. Yeah, he missed. He makes. A or? I, I don't know. I don't think so. Although maybe, they they have hinted with the saw blades. I think. Yeah, it maybe when when what is it Betsy or Betty or something like that? Yeah, that he's, he's trying always to trying to protect safe. her. Yeah. Maybe someday something will happen to her and he'll become the villain. That's interesting. Yeah, all the all of these folks came back, including as we already said, Vincent D'Onofrio. Who, I assumed he wasn't going to be back. I'd heard stuff about this season, and it was, you know, Punisher's the bad guy, and Electra, Electra, and Electra will be in there, etc. I have to complain about one thing. Okay. That oh, it upsets me that this is what happened because it was kind of the big thing for the show. We had an, and we're going to spoiler alert you guys here. If you haven't seen it, why the hell are you listening? Go away and come back when you have. The guy who is the blacksmith was Colonel whatever. His, is that Clancy Brown play? Right, his former commanding officer. And so I saw that guy, and it's a Clancy Brown in a colonel's uniform, or, you know, a, a big military uniform. And I went, whoa, I've seen that guy before. He's... In some other Marvel deal, is he on Agents of Shield or what? he plays this character in a different, Are a you different of the show plot? that is so cool? And so I get on the internet and I type in his name so that I can see what other show that he's in, and it comes up and says, "Is this 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 guy is the blacksmith?" And they discover this, and, this. and I basically have the end of the show ruined for me because I looked up <laughs> this guy, and I'm like. You should have called Damn it, me. what the... How did that happen? And it turns out that he plays a freaking general in The Flash. The guy who created the grod and who was, like, trying to catch the... Mil it's, it's the exact same character. But that's not a problem with Daredevil. With When I was watching... It is. It, they cast... They should have cast somebody else. Why did they cast him? No, because... He played when, the exact same character it, when in I a was, superhero TV show. No, he didn't. Because they set him up as being Castle's friend. And I said to Jeff... Holy crap, Clancy Brown is playing a good guy. I've never <laughs> seen that. I bet in his whole career, he's never played a good guy. And then it's revealed. It's like, oh, okay, that's why they cast right, no Clancy wonder. Brown. I just wish they'd cast somebody else. Because, I mean, he, this year, he appeared in The Flash as the... I mean, sure, he had a different name, but it's, he was wearing the same uniform 
I mean, maybe there's a few different ribbons on the shoulder or something, but it was the exact same guy. And so it totally made me think, oh, this guy is somebody that's been on a... I, I was assuming that we had a really cool Easter egg. They're, they picked, took somebody that was in Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or in at least in, you know, one of the other Netflix shows or something. And they threw him in there and I just thought, awesome, rad, let me see. Oh, blew it. Uh, you blew it, sir. I, I know, I know now to never do that again. Just screw Easter eggs. Those are for the geeks, not for me who is a, uh, wait, a nerd? That's not, because those are the smart guys. <laughs> Well, I see, I didn't have that experience. So my experience of watching Daredevil Season 2 was wholly positive. <laughs> I loved Daredevil Season 2. And the thing that I loved about it most was that everybody had something to do. Like, it gave Karen so much stuff to do with yeah. everything like that. And when she goes to work at the Examiner... I was just like, wow, this is really, really interesting. And the, the dynamic that she had with the publisher, uh -huh. with the, 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 the J. Jonah Jameson type character, the, the editor, I was just like, this is really cool. And yeah, they gave Foggy actual like court time where you could see that he was a good lawyer. And there's this scene early, early on where he talks like these scumbags. Sorry. He talks to these gangbangers from killing each other in an emergency room and, he, and you yeah, see that this guy has oratory skills and he's logical and yeah he would stand up to that really nasty district attorney that nobody dared stand up to and I was like wow that's really really cool and and yeah Matt of course he's the star of the show so they gave him a buttload of stuff to do too but uh, I liked that they, they it felt like they had just planned out all of this stuff the stuff with the Punisher they introduce him, and then I sort of thought, okay, well, that's done. But the Punisher comes back again, and they that carries through to the last episode. Yeah, I knew he couldn't possibly do, be done when they captured him and arrested him. It feels like, okay, that's the end. But the, I knew it. it was too much of a dangling thread oh, well, or something where they I didn't think he was done, to... but I thought it became a courtroom drama now and we're going to defend this guy and mm -hmm. that's the the role the Punisher was going to play. But then, you know, when he gets sentenced and we have this insanely violent <laughs> fight with like a hundred inmates <laughs> all trying to kill Castle. Oh my gosh, I just... I, it was really neat because yeah, his fighting style is so much dirtier and more brutal than Daredevil's. Yeah, it was a lot like that scene from, like, I'd say episode four or five, whatever it was, from the first season where Daredevil goes into this hallway and there's several rooms coming off of it and all these thugs keep coming out to fight him and it's just this kind of amazingly choreographed fight where he takes them all down. It was down. like a ballet. Yeah, yeah it was And just... they did that in this season with Daredevil when he goes into like the Dogs of Hell's yeah, that's uh, true. compound and he just fights his way through. Yeah, down the stairwell or whatever as they yeah. keep coming. But that, it was a similar thing in that the prison where he's just in the hallway as all the prisoners come out. But it, the Punisher is much more violent He's just lethal. Or, just yeah. like, oh my gosh. He doesn't. And yeah, he'd stab guys like 27 punches. times. Oh my gosh, that's the, that was the thing that would always, yeah. I mean, that's, I, I've seen that somewhere where somebody, I, I saw a thing like on Facebook or something like that, where it's just <laughs> like, if somebody comes at you with a knife, you, you know, you need to run or something. It's not going to be like this. And they show like two guys and like, they have a knife and they're like standing off and like moving back and forth, you know, like they're going to fight like they're sword fighting or you know they're fencing or something and, st and they're like it's probably going to be like this instead and like the one guy just runs in pins the other guy's arm down and just stabs him over and over and over and over again and it's just like that's what castle w w what the punisher would do if he got in close enough he didn't just stab him once it was he ev eviscerated a man he would go after them yeah, it was it was rough. I remember watching that scene and going, "Oh my gosh, this is bloody and crazy. This is more violent than anything they've done yet." I think. Yeah, it was not not for little 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 kids, and I'm sure <laughs> you had several in the room. Oh Jesus! Uh oh. Yeah, it's interesting how big of an ensemble cast they've now made this show into. Uh, it seemed like it used to be, 
you know, Foggy, Karen, and Matt, and everybody else was, like, just kind of side characters. But, I mean, Frank Castle was as big a character or more than, you know, than any of those three. And then there was also Elektra, and there was the the kingpin back and et cetera et cetera et cetera on down the line even the police officer uh who was just the uniform police now he's moved up to being the uh the sergeant uh detective whatever and you saw yeah, the, those same faces over and over again and the editor was back again from the first season that was ben urich's boss and now he's apparently karen's boss uh we saw like a Foggy's sort oh, yeah. of girlfriend lawyer. Yeah, his his friend with benefits, or I don't know what you want to call her, but yeah, it was it was really well done. I thought worth the thirteen hours that you have to spend to see it all. Uh, yeah, well, it's... entertainment, anyways. It was good entertainment. It was fun. There was so much depth to it, and maybe there was in the first season, but I just don't remember it being this way. But, like, the character of Frank Castle was hard for me to like at first, and I was still like, oh, gosh, he's such a douche. But as the series progressed, I started to respect him more and more. And there were times, even, when Matt was hard to like. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, gosh, he was... I could see him ruining his own career and destroying his friendship with Foggy. And there were times where I just didn't get why he did it. And Jeff explained that, well, when Electra comes into his life, that's all he thinks about. That's all he cares about. And I said, oh, okay, well, I guess that, well, that would make sense. But yeah, he had a good thing going on. And then, and he totally ruined it. And the whole castle case, the, 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 the trial, you know, he botches that. He's not. He lets his friends down, and I thought that that was really interesting. And and also, he has this moral code, the code of you know we're not going to kill, we're not going to cross this line. But he was fighting undead ninjas, and at one point I was like, okay, cross the line in this case. And like with Nobu, cross the line, okay? There are some people. <laughs> They're not just drug dealers or, you know, pimps or whatever. These are bad guys. They need to be taken out of the equation. Yeah, that, it seemed like that was such a thing in this show, too, is that don't cross the line, don't kill. Daredevil is showing all these other people because Electra, she didn't care. She'd kill whatever. She wasn't afraid. And same thing with Castle. He, he shot everybody. He didn't care. He would kill whatever got in his way. That was a huge thing there. It was like a vigilante. I don't know if they were trying to say something with that. Like these people are actually good. I mean, maybe it's, you know, you had Civil War this summer where it was all about, you know, are superheroes good or bad? Do we need to put a collar and a leash on them? You know, what do we got to do? I don't know if it had anything to do with that, but it seemed like a, a serious theme in this show. It was just like, what does a vigilante have to do to be still considered a good guy instead of a problem and when does the vigilante become a terrorist or or something like that uh it was the, the moral quandary and I don't, I don't think they answered it I mean in the end when he fights Nobu he throws him off a building and that's actually like the second time that he's killed him but, of course, he doesn't die for some reason. He keeps getting back up until Stick finishes him off. Yeah, there was a few things that I wonder about, and maybe they were supposed to be left for next season. Because, yeah, there's that uh, kiln, or whatever the crap it is that they put Electra in at the end. <laughs> that thing that was being filled with blood from those weird zombie guys... There was the gigantic hole in the ground that was never really explained. We don't know what the heck they were doing. It was so deep that it took to the next episode for the flashlight to hit the bottom. 
<laughs> Depending on how long you waited yeah, in could between have been months. episodes. Yeah, that's a deep hole. <laughs> yeah, for people like us who didn't watch it so, uh, so bingy, uh, yeah, it, it took weeks. <laughs> See, I thought that they weren't going to solve the whole blacksmith thing. That that was going to be left for Punisher to deal with in his own show. And so when it was resolved, I was like, oh, okay, I guess there'll be other stuff for him to... There's always bad guys for him to kill, I guess, but... Uh, yeah, there. It, it was kind of interesting, though, the way that they did it, because, you know, he brings him into that shed, he's all beat up, and, and the blacksmith guy's like, oh, yeah, there's so much more to this, and you have no idea... You can punish me all you want. They call you the Punisher. Go ahead and show me what you got. You'll never know anything. Or what he's going on this whole monologue. And then he just shoots him. He says, one shot, one kill. Boom. And I was like, oh, well, that was unexpected. unexpected. I, I thought that we would at least get the story behind this. Hear what it was that he had to say so that we could feel some closure. But I guess not. We'll just shoot him. That'll do it, too. Uh, which works for the Punisher. The Punisher, I don't know the character well, but from what I do know of him, that's what he does, is just blows people away. He's not uh, the thinking man's character or the merciful, mercy is for the weak. Uh, <laughs> you know, if a man confronts you, he is your enemy. That's An enemy right. deserves no mercy. Yeah, he's, he's like the head of the friggin' Cobra Kai. He... <laughs> It's not just going to wait to hear the story. He shoots first and asks questions later. So it works. But it was kind of weird. Now I've heard, and, th and this was another thing when I was saying, oh yeah, I knew Punisher was coming back for more. I knew at least maybe we wouldn't get more with him. Uh, I didn't know whether the, the court case was coming or what was coming with that. Uh, I thought maybe he would just get thrown in jail and then all of a sudden in episode 13 he comes back and he escapes. Because I had heard that Netflix had greenlit a Punisher series because of uh, the success of the character in the Daredevil season 2. I knew that was coming and so that they had, there had to be some way that that was set up if that was going to happen. But that's an, that's another thing that's interesting about this. Uh, and you, you know, you just went to Comic Con, uh, and did were you at a panel? Was there a Netflix panel? Well, it was like called, a Marvel. It Netflix? was called the Luke Cage panel. Oh, okay. But Jeff Loeb moderated it, and I guess he's in charge of all of these Marvel TV shows. The and executive so it was, producer. Yeah, it was mostly Luke Cage, but they also talked. Uh, they had John Barenthal come out and talk about playing the Punisher and uh, you know that he's excited to do it again and and he the weird thing is he seems like a really sweet guy in person <laughs> but you wouldn't guess it from the way he looks or the way he acts in in that show uh, and then yeah they showed a little bit for Iron Fist which is the series that comes yeah, they after have... Luke Cage and had a message from the set there and then they showed a teaser for The Defenders. And it said, coming 2017. That's, and I thought, wow, that's next, next year. year. That next year. How what are they the going to manage that? And I look forward to finding out. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I All of those things hit YouTube, like, I don't know, the same day or whenever it was that those... When did, what, what day was that panel? Was that a Friday or I a Saturday? I think it was Thursday. Oh, Thursday? Okay, so and they I came out the like... the next day... It was everywhere. Yeah, the, I started seeing them. I think I didn't watch them until actually Saturday, but I don't think that that was the first day they were available. Uh, but yeah, I saw all those things, the, the various uh, teasers and trailers that they had for and they Luke announced Cage. that Daredevil is getting a third season, yeah, too. Yeah, they had a little tiny teaser where it was like the platforms or whatever, and you see one, two, and then you hear punching and then like blood spatters up on there and then it says three so yeah it's it's interesting to to see all this stuff that is to come now luke cage we already are familiar with he was all over jessica jones <laughs> and he was in the show <laughs> so we're well familiar with him i don't know how what you know 
his story and what his arc and all that kind of stuff is going to be. But uh, he's going to be badass, as usual. Yeah, I like the teaser that they showed where he's walking up and all these... He's like, oh, you guys aren't familiar with me. I can see or says something like that. And then they shoot a bunch of guns at him. He's like, damn it, I'm getting sick of buying new clothes. Because everybody tries to shoot him not knowing that it's not going to work. Do you think his eyes are bulletproof? Yeah, probably. Yeah? Well, I don't know. I mean, they're your eyes... Your eyes aren't They're skin. skin. They're just like a membrane or something. Does he have to close his eyes to not get shot in the uh, brain through his eyeball? I don't so, know. So yeah, we got all that. We got uh, we got to see Iron Fist and hear the guy say "Hello, Danny." But yeah, Luke Cage comes out in September. Yeah, that's soon. Right around the time this, <laughs> this, episode, this episode finally airs. I would think so. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, and. Uh, when when is Iron Fist? I'm guessing it's that's like November be... or December. It's at the end of the year, but oh, it's still so it's this year. Still this year that'll hit. Wow, I'm gonna have to watch Luke Cage faster than I did these other ones. Then uh, I love you. We uh, parceled out Jessica Jones so that the second Jessica Jones ended, we could have started Daredevil season two. Yeah, but we didn't. We still waited a month or so, but. I think that's a good way to go if you can stretch it so that there's almost no time to wait for the next show. Yeah, that's cool. And at this point, it's starting to become where there isn't going to be time to wait. You know, if one's coming out in September and the next one's November, December, you have to almost binge it to be able to get through them in time. And I'm assuming Daredevil Season 3 is probably going to be coming out in March or February. And then your Defenders will probably come out in... June or July or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Because I think they said Jessica Jones is getting a second season, but they didn't say anything about that at the panel that I went to. And they also didn't really talk about Punisher's own series, Mm -hmm. like when that would drop. Yeah, I'm assuming that that will wait until after all the things that have already been announced. Daredevil season two came out really soon, which was kind of surprising to me considering that they'd announced all these other shows before it and that's why I assume that it'll probably come out again soon seems to come out every year in March I guess it's cool to be able to look forward to all this kind of stuff and I'm still you know I I still hold out hope that somehow we'll see different people from different shows gosh I would love if just Phil Coulson or somebody showed up in one of these shows just for a short bit but um, not yet. Uh, so far, not happening. Was there any cool other cool announcements? Something worth talking about that you? I mean, there was a. I know that also a whole bunch of trailers from DC hit like the same day that all the stuff from Netflix did. We saw. When like you a, say DC, you mean DC Television or? DC I mean movie? DC movies, okay. like the Wonder Woman movie. There was a trailer. They had a Justice League trailer. and some... Does Aquaman have his own trailer? He doesn't have his own trailer, but he was all over the Justice League one. They had Aquaman on there. They showed. They even showed Cyborg. Apparently Cyborg will be in the uh, Justice, oh, in Justice League, League movie. Yeah. Flash. Who is a very different kind of Flash than the Flash from the TV show. This Flash feels more like the Spider-Man character from... Uh, Civil War. Is it the Wally West Flash or is it a, a Barry Allen? Flash? I think it's Barry Allen. Oh, I okay. can't remember what they called him. I assume they called him Barry Allen. Um, but yeah, they. It's basically like Batman is going around getting the band together. Did you see that panel? The DC. I didn't. I saw the everything? Wonder Woman one. Oh, so they were all separate? No, they were all together. But I, I, I just saw the Wonder Woman one. I, I did. I didn't make it to the. Rest. To the earlier one. Oh, I just assumed that they were I, well, I, one I, I, hour worth of stuff, just like the Luke Cage panel was, where they, or doesn't Marvel do one every year where they're like, yeah, this is what we're doing, and they bring out. Yeah, and they did people. this year too, and it was mostly Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two they were talking about, but they also had the Black Panther pa- cast come out, and they also had Doctor Strange talked a little bit about that and. Doctor Strange is November that it comes out? Yeah, it comes out soon. Are you excited? Yeah. 
Let me know if that happens. I mean, I want to see it. I'm not excited because I don't know Doctor Strange at all. He's not a character that I can use a peg warmer. <laughs> so I don't know what his deal is. It might be really cool. I can see it being a really cool show, but I don't know. Sometimes uh, that can work in your benefit, though. If, if we go to it and we don't know that, you know, Baron Mordo is supposed to be like this and they've changed it to be this, or, oh, that girl was never his love interest and she is now, that, that stuff won't distract. If the story is well told, we'll just be carried around, uh, carried yeah. along as though it's a story, you know, a brand new... Yeah, it'll be like Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, I knew nothing about them, and I loved the movie, so I can totally see myself feeling the same way about this. So that could be good. They announced who plays Captain Marvel in that panel, right? Yeah, Brie Larson is Captain... I mean, we already knew that in the same way that we knew Joss Whedon was directing the Avengers, but it wasn't until he came out that it was official that he was playing. That right. He was directing. Yeah, same with Brie Larson. It's like, hey, she signed to do this, and then she came out officially as Captain Marvel. I, I don't have a problem with that. I think she's fine. I, I don't know her from anything, and so it's not like yeah. seeing somebody with a lot of baggage where you're like, oh, jeez. It's not like when Scarlett Johansson was cast as uh, Black Widow, and you were just kind of like, hmm. Yeah, I had seen and not particularly liked Scarlett Johansson at around that time. But she turned out fine. Not everybody can be unknown. Yeah. Uh, you know, with somebody like Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel, she's headlining her own movie, you know what I mean? So there had to have been somebody, whether it was at Disney or somebody at Marvel, that said, Well, gosh, we need somebody who at least has movies under her belt. You know what I mean? Instead of just casting an unknown as, as this character that we're going to have millions and millions of dollars writing on, hopefully they introduce Captain Marvel in something before that movie comes out. Yeah, that would be cool. I mean, they'd be crazy not to. You, you, you need to do that in these movies so that we recognize it, so that we see him again and just... Uh, well, for, we've talked about it. The Black Panther movie, the solo movie, will be so much more successful because they introduced him in Civil War. Yeah, I think so. Because people, kids, already like him or, you know, or audience members him. just, you know, <laughs> gravitated toward him or, or whatever. Yeah. But I, I guess it could backfire if you hated him in Civil War. I thought he but was I, I, unlikable I, I in Civil War. I thought he was War. unlikable in Civil War, but I'll still go see Black Panther. Oh, yeah, I will too, but I'm just saying that I thought he was unlikable, so... I don't know that that's going to make people like, ooh, I need to run out and see a whole movie of this guy that was so unlikable. Uh, he looked cool, though. I think we agreed on that. That he did. And that goes a long way. Yeah, it's the, that's the reason why I w wanted to see Condor Man. Oh, you butthole. Really? <laughs> Condor Man. <laughs> yeah, Disney hasn't gotten around to remaking that yet. Yeah, that's cool. That's so weird. Is there anything else that was cool that you, you want to say? No. Okay. I don't. I don't think I, so. I was. I wanted the one thing I was wondering about that. You know, you go every year to this show, uh, so that you can, you know, see those things that you don't get to see otherwise. You know what I'm saying? Like you get to see these panels and hear about these things. I was wondering, do you feel? Do you ever get irritated when you find out that all these things are on YouTube already? Like the very day that you saw them. These things that are the, hey, everybody, Comic Con, check this out. It's your first chance to see this before it hits YouTube in five minutes. Does that, uh, do you some, feel like you're getting cheated? Sometimes I do a little bit, but this year, no, because I got to see stuff because of YouTube this year. All <laughs> right. <laughs> which is nice. And yeah, you can, you, they, a lot of times they don't show the clips. But you get to see the panels. You get to see what these people look like. One thing that I thought was really neat on uh, Luke Cage is you know, we got to meet the whole cast of Luke Cage and find out who they were playing. And then Jeff Loeb would ask him a question and we get to kind of see their personality. And there's this woman, I've never seen her before, uh, who's playing Misty Knight. And she came out and I was like, holy cow, that looks like a comic book come to life. And... Jeff Loeb was talking about the casting process, or maybe it was the director of, of 
or sorry, the showrunner of Luke Cage was talking about trying to find somebody to play Misty Knight, and it was a really difficult part to cast. And then this woman came in, and they're like, oh, okay, well, yeah, we would cast her because she is Misty Knight. <laughs> that, that was really neat to me, and I, I, I don't know that that means anything, but when you see this, if you see that panel, and you compare the woman that came out to the comic book character, you're like, oh, okay, well, naturally you would cast the woman that looks <laughs> like Misty Knight to play Misty Knight. Yeah, you don't have to dye her hair, you don't have to give her a gym pass for <laughs> six months. Anyway, I look more forward to seeing Luke Cage after seeing that panel, mm -hmm. um, just because it looked like they were having a lot of fun. They showed a lot of clips and introduced a bunch of these characters, and, and I, I you got the tone of the show. It doesn't seem as hard and as nasty as as Jessica Jones, and, and or even Daredevil. It seems to have a little bit more humor, and Luke is kind of a gentle guy, despite the fact that he's unstoppable, that kind of thing. And, and I was like, oh, cool. You know, he, he seems to have a sense of humor and, and be a decent human being. And that makes me want to watch it more. Cool. I wanted to watch it anyways, but yeah, <laughs> hearing that makes me still want to watch it. Well, that scene you talked about where he's like, the worst thing about this is, is always having to buy a new wardrobe. He, he's going in, he's infiltrating this guy's lair and the guy has, you know, like 15 bodyguards and they all try and shoot Luke Cage and then of course they try and beat him up because if your bullet didn't do any damage of course a fist will <laughs> and Luke just you know wipes the walls with all of these people and then he goes in to confront this bad guy this this mobster or whatever you know he, he the mobster tells him what he wants to know and then <laughs> Luke looks on the wall and there's a t-shirt of this gym that this guy is running. And he says, do you have this in an XXL? And for some reason, that really made me laugh. <laughs> just the idea that he's just like, you know, you guys shot holes into my shirt. But hey, you guys have a shirt that advertises your gym. <laughs> I don't know. That seemed like a really funny thing to do. And that made me like him. Cool. Was there a DC TV panel? Did you... There was. I didn't get into it, darn it, but it's all on YouTube. We should watch it. I did go to the DC TV panel last year, and tons of stuff was spoiled for the shows I didn't watch, <laughs> which would more, matter more this year because I've been watching Arrow, and so I'm emotionally invested in all those characters. Do they have a... Did they but, talk about Supergirl in that yeah. one? Or was it... It wasn't separate then? It was, no, that's how I saw Supergirl. Is they showed us... No, no, no. I'm talking about this year. Did they? Are they still all together? Yeah, it was because still Supergirl all together in like a two-hour block. No, no. It's it's. She's on the CW now. Oh, is she? Remember she was canceled? She, CBS didn't want it anymore, and so C, CW took it on, and now it's part of that oh, scene. Oh, that's going to be good then. There are going to be a lot four of crossovers. Shows, and there's going to be a big four-part crossover during sweeps for the four shows. A four-part? So that freaking Legends of Tomorrow is still going? Yeah. <laughs> that, I don't but know. people say it's good. I think I'm willing to give it a try. I, um, you I watched gave the first it a try. Episode, I watched but it, I didn't and it even do didn't that, interest so. me. I watched the... Did I see two? I think I even saw two episodes. Oh, really? Okay. It just didn't interest me. It didn't work for me. I don't know why, but I just didn't care. So, yeah. So they've got four shows all going on the CW, huh? Well, it's four shows under the same Greg Berlanti umbrella. You right. said that oh, iZombie I too, is but... also a DC show. And, and you know, they may even have more than that. I don't know. But the Arrowverse shows are those four. Right, that are played from all the same oh, characters that have crossed over and they stuff. They cast a guy to play Superman on Supergirl now. And yeah. he came out and didn't look nearly as much like Superman as the guy that plays Ray Palmer. But that's just me. <laughs> um, and so that'll be interesting. And they show him in the suit and all that, and it looks like a Superman suit. Well, that's that's nice. I mean, it matches hers. It's uh -huh. the same kind it's got of design. The same little skirt. <laughs> the it cape does, that made, only comes to her waist. They made him shave his legs, which I was like, ooh, weird. Huh? 
that's that's cool. That is interesting. They bring in Superman, and they don't just call him the big guy or the the other guy or the guy upstairs or whatever the heck they were calling. They him. did in that first episode. I will, yeah. I wonder. I never gave Supergirl a, a second glance, but I I'd heard so many good like things to about watch it. the crossover with the Flash. Yeah, and maybe I'll just. I don't want to binge watch it, but maybe I'll just sit down and watch two or three episodes in a row. And, and if it hooks me, I'll be like, okay, I'm in. How would you be able to see it is my question. Because Oh, is it not on Netflix? As far as I know, maybe it is. I don't know, but we didn't watch it because it wasn't on Hulu. It oh, because CBS shows aren't yeah. on Yeah. You're supposed to get CBS All Access to watch it. And those. you have to pay for it. I actually yeah. looked into that, and there, that's the only way. Is that a train? Yeah, Is it that sounds, way it's not going away? It sounds like it's carrying ball bearings or something. Yeah, oh my gosh, that's loud. I don't think we've ever had such a loud background noise on a show, but there you go, folks. We had the wailing of the damned. <laughs> yeah. I like to see I them... Cut ex- that out, though. <laughs> I like to see them expanding the universe. I wonder how far they can take it, though. I mean, if CBS was done with it... That makes it more likely to land on Netflix soon, if it isn't already. But if they were done with it, you know, who else is going to try and touch one of these properties? Well, I don't know that CBS CW. canceled it, but it just they felt like at the CW, it would be easier to manage. Plus, that they have that whole ability to advertise what's coming up next and advertise within the, the other shows, uh, which you wouldn't have had on... CBS. There's no chance they advertised The Flash on the episode that crossed over with The Flash, right? Uh, I, I don't know. I would guess not. I'm anyway. Not saying, Check out The Flash's further adventures on the CW. Um, probably not. But yeah, so they had a, a panel for that. What else? And yeah, I didn't get to see that, so I, I don't know what they spoiled for Flash Season 3, <laughs> except for, yeah, we got to see a character in a costume and we're like oh all right well that answers that yeah they you saw that too no i haven't seen that i didn't look up that okay you got spoiled that kevin smith will be directing four episodes (laughs) of that flash show yeah kevin smith has said that he's going to do stuff many many times and then it doesn't happen so it could all fall apart but yeah they invited him to come up to vancouver and do four season three episodes of The Flash because he had such a good time. I, I assume they had a good time too or they wouldn't ask him back, but boy, he had a good time doing his one episode of The Flash. Yeah, the episode you thought was the weakest of the season. <laughs> I didn't dare say that. Or did I say that in the first? Did we talk about The Flash season two already? We did. I don't know if in you said anything days. about that being a weak show, but you've said it since then. And I was just making sure that that got out there. So that when Kevin Smith finally hears this episode, he'll come and punch you in the face. Well, he's not a physical person, but why would he ever hear this? <laughs> he won't. That was a bad joke. I'm trying to think if there's anything else interesting that you should have heard about at Comic-Con. You saw what cool action figures they're making. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was kind of my priority. I No, I'm totally with you, though, man. That's That's what I'm interested in not to the point that you are because you resell them but i buy them and put them on a shelf sometimes i take pictures of the shelf and put it up on facebook and everybody goes ah what a loser do they really no they don't well that's what i said when you take pictures of your pez dispensers yep everybody's cooler than me even rich outfield how about that Mm, that's that's when you know you're at the bottom of the barrel Okay, well, let me tie it all the way back to our, our, our number one topic. Uh, yeah, I collect these figures called Marvel Legends. They're six-inch action figures by Hasbro, and they showed that they're going to do a whole Netflix, Marvel Netflix Universe series. And so they'll be like Daredevil and, and Fisk, I assume, and Elektra, and, and they, they showed the first two, which are... Punisher. Punisher and Jessica Jones and they're just fantastic figures I can't imagine a single child on the face of the earth would want to buy these so chances are they won't be like 
everywhere in stores. They'd, they'd be crazy to have these in like a Walmart, right? <laughs> but they put all those. But they're good looking figures, and I, I think that people that like these shows would be really happy to have those figures. They put all those DC TV guys, and I saw them at least at Target. They'd have the Flash and yeah, Arrow. There's a big difference between Daredevil and, and the Flash, or even Daredevil and Arrow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those are the Netflix shows are adult shows. Yeah, that is true. But at this point, how many children buy any of those figures? I mean, they're twenty bucks a pop for you know these figures, and they're super detailed and super fancy. And I can't imagine that they sell any of them to children. They have cheapy looking ones that are you know large and you know less detailed and less posable and all that kind of stuff that you buy for the kids. I mean, I have a whole... My son has a whole collection of the 12-inch sized figures that... Uh, okay, well, you're a man-child, sort of, right? Not like yeah. I am, but would you buy any Netflix Legends figures? Would Like, would you buy that Punisher that looks like Barenthal? I would consider it, definitely. Would I'm not as much of a man-child as others that I know. I know a guy... I work with a guy who would buy anything anything seems like that's all his paycheck must go to he's like okay this much oh shoot I'm not going to have enough for rent because they put out a uh, Barenthal Punisher guy and I have to get that too and there are people that are like that about anything as long as it's Marvel related comic book figure uh, I only have so much space that's the one problem that I've run into is I've kind of filled up all my space on my bookshelves I'm going to have to put more bookshelves on another wall or something to be able to uh, put up more figures. Or I have to take ones that are up there down and replace them with new ones. So now I'm to the point where everything I buy is a decision, you know. It's not just, yeah, okay, I'll get that. It's, uh, what am I going to, where am I going to put this one? Do I have a spot that I can put this one? I don't know. Uh... I guess I don't need it. <laughs> so I, I need to adopt that mindset. It's hard because I buy so much junk, <laughs> and then I go, "Oh gosh, where, where, uh, where can I put this? Why did I buy it?" Yeah, it's it's hard to to do. Like I I, I want to put them up and display them. I'm not one of those people that just wants to have it in the box. Uh, I hate that. To tell you the truth, I think what a freaking waste. Take it out of the box. Uh, I don't. I don't get it at all. To tell you the truth, I think these people are expecting to resell it later, or maybe they just think the box is neat too, and they want to have the packaging. I don't know. I don't. I don't understand it at all. I don't. Well, I guess you proved that there is resale value to it, so maybe that's uh, what it's all for. But it seems like most people that collect aren't doing it because they're wanting something valuable it's because they want something that they think is neat so why not take it out of the box I don't know there's this show it's a Netflix show that I my son watches it a lot and I watch it sometimes with him it's called uh, Mental Floss and it has what's his name John Green is that the guy that wrote uh, The Fault in Our Stars mm -hmm. yeah he's the host of this show and they have this back drop behind him that they set up and it's this just gigantic wooden thing that has just a load of all sorts of different toys on it and it's so cool looking and that's sort of the inspiration of what I'm going for with my bookshelf oh of course I also have books on my bookshelf and this thing has nothing but toys on it I'm afraid that I'll come to that point. If I keep buying more stuff, I'll just have just toys, and I'll have to just get rid of the books. Or else I'll have to just stuff all sorts of toys, you know, and it'll just be like a huge jumble. Like, here's Buzz Lightyear right next to the Barenthal Punisher, you know, right next to... Little tiny G.I. Joe gun. Right, yeah, I mean, you, you, you could do that, and that's what they do on the uh, mental, mental floss cells. thing. It's just got everything, and... Some of the shelves have 10 or 15 different things just jammed into them, which looks really cool, and I love it. And maybe I'll go there someday, but so far I'm, I've still got things in 
their boxes and they can't get out of the box. Wasn't it just me that was saying, why not take it out of the box? <laughs> oh, hypocrite. Oh, you know what you've become? Yeah, what I most despise. Why do you say this when you know I will kill you for it? Well, you need to keep a little section of your shelf open because Hasbro announced a 1979 era disco dazzler with <laughs> roller skates. <laughs> and what I was saying about, you know, kids not buying Netflix figures, no kid on earth is going to buy a disco version of Dazzler or any version of Dazzler but especially the disco one <laughs> just I, I couldn't believe the huts by these guys had <laughs> to uh, release that well they've released their share of pig warmers in the past and they're you know they're gonna release more and unfortunately they also sometimes release their share of ones you cannot ever find cannot get your hands on I'd really like some of the X-Men that are out right now but all the stores are too full of peg warmers to uh, to get any X-Men in. She's part of that second uh, X-Men wave. Disco oh, uh, Dazzler. Yes. Disco so it'll be fun Dazzler. to uh, see if that ends up everywhere or nowhere. Because it's going to be one or the other. It's not going to be like, yeah, she sold all right. It's going to be nobody had that figure. Or, oh, that's the only figure everybody <laughs> I'm Right. It's still there two years from now they've got 15 disco dazzlers uh, so that's our action figure geek talk for this year <laughs> was there anything else cool you already said no there was no, nothing that's, cool that's... you were unable to get into anything Is that, it sounds like you had a hard time getting into stuff well it, it was not my fault this year the organization I, 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 wasn't awesome I vowed that I would not talk about it because it would taint the entire experience okay but yeah the, you were able in, to injustice happened so. <laughs> and that wasn't the Justice League thing you did say that you were able to buy a lot of because at Comic Con they do all sorts of exclusive figures you can only buy there right yeah like all exclusive sorts of different posters, things posters exclusive uh, mostly toys, collectibles kind of thing, you know. Or, and sometimes they're just, oh, they're nigh unto impossible to find. And uh, I did really well this year with that. Well, that's good. So yeah. that, yeah, that was I remember. I remember when I went with you to Comic-Con back in 2006 and 2008... Was I still uh, involved in the reselling of toys Not business in 2008. In 2008? No. no? Okay, so just in 2006, I remember we bought so many figures. We stopped at every store along the drive all the way to San Diego and bought figures there. And then we bought a bunch of stuff at the... And we got all sorts of freebies and all sorts of stuff to the point where we could resell all these things on eBay and make all the money we spent going to Comic-Con back plus a bunch extra... So it was totally worth it. And I know the expenses have gone up since then. Has the uh, the return on investment also gone up? Do you still... Well, certainly. I mean, I, but I had to buy a lot more to be able to mitigate the whole weekend. And I, yeah, I don't know that I would actually make a profit if we counted getting tickets and getting over there the gas and the hotel each night you know just the, the hell that all that entails but you know I'm there to have fun too right and if it ends up it's the world's loudest motorcycle <laughs> and it's like driving in circles I'm around the us cries of the damned now <laughs> But yeah, but I go there because I like it. I, I enjoy the panels. I, I like Comic Con. I like sweating like crazy in the humidity of San Diego. And so any money that I make back from you know getting these rare toys and stuff is just you know it's icing. It's really gravy. Nice, nice that I'm able to do that. And yeah, I, I, I oh boy, I compl I was so unhappy at, at one point on the weekend. But after the last day when I was you know it was time to come home. I just I, I looked at it through 
rose-colored glasses and said, you know, I'm really lucky that I can do this and that I've been able to do this almost every single year and, and uh, you know, that it's still fun and I still think about doing it next year. A lot of people have it way harder than I do and, and I just need to keep that in mind. Yeah, that's definitely true. And that's cool that you can go... Uh, I wish I could find some way to be able to go back to it with you. I mean, I'd, like you were saying, it would be a lot easier if you had somebody there with you that, you know, oh, yeah, I'll wait in line here while you go do that. You know, you can tag team things some and so yeah, forth. Yeah, people would say, okay, hey, wait in line while I go to McDonald's. Do you want anything? People brought me free food in the Hall H line on Saturday just because it's like, oh, yeah, because we, we got to know each other. We were in the fucking line that long. <laughs> and that sort of thing, too, if you're in some kind of camp out line where it's like, okay, I'm going to go have a shower and get three hours of sleep. I'll see you at four or whatever. That would just be awesome to have that kind of freedom. Yeah, it would be cool to go and do it again, too. I, mean, I remember it being fun. I also remember it being awful. So, <laughs> like you said, you know, you got to concentrate on the on the happy thoughts sometimes with something like that because that is so full of you know it's just crowded is the best way to describe it and it's crowded in a way that most people just cannot understand never seen so many people in their life and never will never meet as many people in their entire life as are inside that building at once but it's neat. I mean, you could see stars right there. You know, they're right across the way from you, and you, you know, you're in the same room as these people that you see on the movies. That's a neat thing. Well, yeah, it would be cool if if you had the interest to try to go again. I, I would do whatever I could to get you down there. But yeah. Uh, and yeah, again, I don't want to focus on the negative because I am lucky. First world problems, kids. But there were points where I was suffering and hot and sweaty and I had miles to walk and I thought nobody else would do this you'd have to be crazy to do what I'm doing right now you know what I mean it's like who else would do what I'm doing nobody and so there you know there was that it's it's not for everybody if, if you were a multimillionaire and you could afford to just stay at the Hilton right there or you know at the convention center itself and have a taxi cab or a limo take you right to the gate and, and all that stuff it would be a totally different experience yeah, you know you'd be need... like humidity what <laughs> no, i haven't even been outside you know what we need to do ride a whole bunch so that someone's making action figures of stuff that we invented and then have our own panel and then once you're a guest of the show i'm sure you get all that treatment and yeah, that's that's true. The people that are, even if they're on one panel, or their, their experience is very, very different. And I, I thought that that was... There, there are always celebrities that are walking among us in costume, because so many people have costume, and you never look at that person to see, oh, well, you know, like one year, they were making Days of Future Past, and Hugh Jackman came to the con in his Wolverine costume, with his hair and stuff because they were shooting at the time and he said one person bothered him and just thought that it was a cool costume but told him oh, you're a little too tall man and this year the kid who I don't know what his name is that plays the flash in the in the movie in the movie had a Gandalf costume on the red and, and he would just walked around the con and yeah we would because he's got a beard and all that you don't know that this is well i wouldn't have known anyway if i were in line right. next to this he's guy kind of new but yeah th that sort of thing happens a lot you know they'll, they'll walk as a stormtrooper or in a spider-man costume or whatever just yeah, so they didn't can... robert downey jr put on his iron man get up and go walking around in the con before too I don't know if he did that because he's so recognizable as well, with his as Tony Stark. Mask down, nobody. Oh, gonna he had know. the mask on. Yeah, that's what I would heard. Oh, okay. Well, then, then that works because yeah, and that, he'd be less recognizable than Hugh Jackman, who you know will never wear a mask in one of these movies. <laughs> um, but I'm sorry, I don't know where I got. Oh, yes, aspirations <laughs> to be at Comic Con, to be there as a. A participant, a participant as a, you know rather than as a fan would just be kind of magical and yeah you're right i should i should work harder 
so that I can get myself there. I remember you saying that once, that you went to the Comic-Con, and I, it may have been 2008, the year that you and I went there together the last time, or it may have been the year after that. But anyways, you were telling me that you were sitting in one of those panels, and, and you had just this feeling as you looked around and you listened to it and something like that, you're like, you know what, someday I'm going to be up there at one of these panels. That sounds like something you would have said, not I me. was telling you, it was you. You, California Rish, who said that. Uh, Must have been because you were in California. I don't believe it. And, uh, yeah, I think that's a good goal to strive. As, as much as being able to own an action figure of a uh, character that you, you, and, created. you created, being able to be on a panel at Comic-Con, I think is... is another worthy goal that you could strive for. Someday you'll have a action figure of all the people from uh, The Calling <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be on the panel discussing the movie version of it. So keep writing. You're at the 10,000 word mark. Don't quit. I, but it's not action figure worthy. There's nothing. There's no action in this story. So. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, this feels like another tangent. But, yeah, it's a worthy goal. And I told you that the last con here in our state that I went to, there was a panel about making your own audiobooks. And it had one woman on the panel. And I thought, I should be on that panel. It should be a one woman and one man. <laughs> and so, that yeah, I just... <laughs> There are topics which uh, I think I could talk about. Yeah. yeah but, uh, Our local Comic-Con, I think we could get on just by saying, hey, we're the Dune Steve. Uh, can we do a panel? And they'd be like, oh, sure. Oh, that's just the Dune Steve? Yeah. I totally think that they would. Yeah, I think you've like, mentioned yeah, yeah, that yeah, before. Sure. And you're like, and we'll get an answer man to come over and just sit there. And yeah. they're like, I don't even know these guys. Yeah. <laughs> F them. It would be fun. The Doonstorf is produced. <laughs> it, it would be fun to bring an Elter Man on. I had plans to create an actual R-O-8-O-T that we could sit up there, that you could, like, move like a puppet. And just be like, do you pop beep pop and <laughs> move it and make his arms go. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was going to be rad. You know, it would have been, actually, probably. And it could still be. But uh, I know you too well. Uh, yeah, we started talking about Daredevil, and, and now we're talking about other things altogether. Oh my god, we're Should still we there. split this into two episodes, or is it just no, one? No, it's all one. It, it flows like honey. Not the bees! <laughs> no, we're done with that, man. Let it go. Yeah, I think that's really all I had to talk about today. I just wanted to talk about Daredevil, and since you were recently back from Comic-Con, I thought it would be cool to talk about anything interesting that you learned while you were there and I guess some of the stuff that you didn't learn but you found out in other ways uh, I remember that being one of the things that made me most angry about the 2008 Comic Con and made me not want to come back is how many panels I was unable to get into um, see that's it's there's irony there because now 50,000 more people go to San Diego Comic Con than did when we went in 2008 and so it's like, wow, how much more difficult would it be to get a... Into? Yeah, I never camped out to get into Hall H, and yet we still got in. And there were times where we got in and went to stuff there and then left. And yeah. then came back. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> it's not a possibility anymore, so... Although I walked in on, I think it was Friday, you know, with almost no line at all. And this guy, Joss Whedon, was doing his panel. And so, you know, I guess it's still doable in some yeah, cases. Depending on the day. Well, I'm glad you had fun and you are able to focus on the positive. Yeah, and I'm going to get you that Disco Dazzler figure. Disco... What's the Disco Dance? It's a song from Phineas and Ferb that it keeps coming to my mind. Disco something 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 queen... <laughs> This is like the cover of a disco magazine. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening, folks. That's uh, another That Gets My Goat. I guess we'll be back again with more uh, probably after we watch Luke Cage and maybe 
Iron Fist. So Sounds until good. then, well, heck, we're uh, going to have other stuff before then, so <laughs> come back next time. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. Sounds like another damned train is coming, so we'll cut it short. Yeah, let's go. Thanks for listening, folks. See ya. Good night. Hey, that ain't funny, man. That gives my goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. Big and Rich are a national treasure, man.